This year alone, over a trillion pictures will be taken. And each day, 95 million will be uploaded to social media. Thanks to the ubiquity of modern phones with cameras, photography is a deeply integrated part of our culture. And it's nearly impossible to imagine the world before photographic evidence of anything even existed. But before its invention in 1839, this technological ability could have easily been considered sorcery. To better understand the science behind the magic, I'm gonna deconstruct the camera by building my own piece by piece, starting with a basic pinhole camera. It takes millions of specialized, skilled experts around the world to produce the countless items we use every day. But could an average person do everything to make all these items alone? Well, that's what I try to attempt. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. The idea for this project actually comes from author Louis Dartnell, who I got to chat with early last year, and who suggested to me a pretty epic challenge. Create a primitive camera, take a selfie in the most truest and fundamental sense you could ever make a selfie, like by making a complete photograph from scratch. But that is a big challenge. While a modern camera is so complex and tiny, it fits inside of your own cell phone as almost an afterthought, that even the very first camera took advantage of a lot of existing technologies. Metallurgy, clear glass, optics, acid production, and precious metals. All things I've dabbled in attempting to produce, but with not the best results. However, in the background, I've been working out the kinks and causes of my past failures. In the following weeks, I'll be finally overcoming some of the biggest hurdles I've run into. But before all that, I want to start from the basics and make the most simple of all cameras, a pinhole camera. And then in the coming weeks, I'll make additional components, such as a lens, until I reach the final step of making the actual film itself. But first, I need to understand how a camera works. And the best way to do that is to look at its origin, the camera obscura. A natural optical phenomenon, it's been used for centuries as a drawing aid. To help understand this phenomenon better, I joined Physics Girl in California, and together we constructed our own giant camera obscura in the back of a U-Haul truck. To make one, all you need to do is completely block out all light sources, except from one point, which acts as a lens. Locking ourselves inside, blocking any light leaks, we tried to see if we could make this happen. At first, nothing was visible except darkness, but slowly our eyes started to adjust and we could make out the movement of passing cars on the back wall. Once our eyes fully adjusted, we could see the projected image of the street on the back wall, but upside down. This is the best attitude ever. What if movies were like this? <laughs> <laughs> like you had to get in a really, really dark room and then wait 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, should we get uh, bigger? Yeah. See it really well now. It's still pretty sharp. Yeah. That's so cool. Are you ready? I am. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Kyle, I can see you. <laughs> wow. I'm starting to get colors. Who's that car? Who's Kona? Although I've heard of this phenomenon for years, and had it explained to me countless times, to finally see it in person was rather surreal. So what exactly is happening to cause this image to show up? I'll let Diana explain. Hey, I'm Diana from the YouTube channel Physics Girl. So the way the camera obscura works has to do with the tiny hole in the box or the U-Haul or whatever you're using. That little hole lets in light coming from specific directions rather than letting in light from all different directions. So that in the end, the light that makes it through the hole is ordered. It's actually let through such that it's in order. And the end result is you get whatever is outside the box projected onto the inside of the box, but it's upside down and horizontally flipped. Check out Diana's video for a more in-depth explanation of how the camera obscura works and more reactions as she shared that experience with some of her fans. If this concept sounds familiar at all to something I've covered before, it should, because I talked about this previously with the human eye when I made corrective lenses. The eye itself utilizes this phenomenon to see. Similarly, with a projection being made to the back of the eye, where the retina transmits it to the brain. The leap from camera obscura to camera is actually pretty simple. It's just the addition of a way to capture the projected image. In fact, one of the first photos was made because his hand was not steady enough to trace the camera obscura image, and so he is looking for an alternative way to capture the image. To next learn some clues about how to construct an actual camera, I met with someone more familiar with analog photography, Mustache Jim. So what are the basics of how a camera works? A camera, it's basically a box 
with the sensor. So the same concept as a camera obscura, you're just adding a sensor. Yeah, yeah, and the sensor is film. You're making a projection onto the surface with projections upside down. So the key thing about with the camera is controlling how light gets in. What are like the aspects of that? So it's kind of like this balancing act, how long you're letting the light onto your sensor with, how sensitive your sensor is in the back of the camera, and your aperture is how big that hole is that lets light in. It's three different variables and you can kind of mix and match to get different effects. Oh, totally, yeah. And then you have like, so when you have like a pinhole or like a camera obscura, mm -hmm. all you have is a hole. And then through the advancements of the wonderful thing we call technology, we have lenses. And lenses allow you to control your focus of the light and it lets you have a lot more control and you can have options. You don't always have to have the same pinhole. Because if you had a, a pinhole that was that large, it would just be all blurry. Yeah, you have this as your aperture. Can you kind of see in there where that's closing up? Uh, tell me a little bit about this camera you have. This is the uh, speed graphic. It's a press camera. It's a four by five camera. You have the lens, the bellows right here, which uh, you can adjust for focusing. Like if I want to do something macro kind of tight, pull this out, get up tight to it, because if I go very far out with this, I can get very close. But if I wanted to get like eight or nine feet away from you, mm -hmm. it would probably be right around here. So the bellows is the to bellows. allow the camera to focus then? Yeah, the bellows allows your light tight box to be flexible so that you can bring it forward and backward. Can you tell me about the ground glass? The ground glass is, can you see a little light through this? It's basically glass that's frosted. Whatever's projected onto the back shines on this. When it shines on this, turns it into the screen. When the lens is open, I can see what is projected. You can get as elaborate as you want with it. I've gone to the hardware store and asked for frosted glass and just had him cut it to the size. And you said it doesn't have to be glass, it could be like wax paper? When you're mocking stuff up and you want to make sure everything is set the way you want, wax paper works. And the back here is where you put your sensor, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Your film goes into these holders. They open up like so. This, you'd insert the film in there. You put it back there cock the shutter and if you had a pinhole you would just open up the shutter to expose the sensor and then you shoot. It doesn't matter what you have, all we're working with really is boxes, just different elaborate doodads that come along with it. Yeah. But the main principle is it hasn't changed that much. You got your whatever comes in the iris projects on the sensor. I just feel more connected to the process when I'm using this because it forces me to slow down and take my time, turns it into this quality, not quantity, and you just think about what you're doing. It's really been like falling in love to embark on this process, you know? I love it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Now to apply what I've learned and build my first camera. Now I need to make it. And the biggest challenge is the limitations of the material I've made from scratch. So I don't have metal, I don't have glass, but I do have paper and wood. To make this cotton paper, I traveled to a cotton farm in Texas where I handpicked my own cotton. Then I used a gin to remove the seeds from the rest of the fiber. The fiber was then ran through a beater machine to break it up into smaller bits. Then it was placed into a tub of water and a mold was pulled through it, forming the sheet of paper. Lastly, it's pressed in a vise and then hung to dry. Another difficult thing is that I need to kind of future-proof this as I'm going to start out as just a pinhole camera but then eventually add to it to add a lens and actual film in the end. So for the design of my camera, it's gonna be pretty simple. A wooden front, a wooden back, a little slot to insert the film, and then between the two boards will be made out of paper bellows. One important thing I need to do is get everything as dark as possible. So I need to figure out some dyes that'll work for that. But first up, let's start cutting some wood. So what I have here is some of the white ash from the tree I originally cut to make my glasses. Those guys. I've used pretty much the entire tree now on different projects. And this is just the last few pieces. Ironically, I think I've had more complaints about cutting down this already dead tree than I did about any of the other animals that had to die for the other things I made. What's wrong with you people? Let's cut some wood. This guy.
Does it look like a camera yet? Almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to hold everything together, I have no metals. So no nails or hinges or hardware. So I'll only be left to use a rather stinky hide glue I previously made from some pig skin. So this will be a bit of a unique challenge. Only mildly rancid. Really. I'm at a square. Should've worn gloves. Now I have the front and back of the camera made. So one of the most interesting things that I learned from Mustache Jim is the whole ground glass element. Whenever I saw somebody looking through an old time camera under the hood, I always assumed they're just looking straight through it. I didn't realize they're actually seeing the projected image on a ground glass. To help illustrate, I have a little projector here, and if you just do a regular glass, it's gonna shine through it. Can maybe make out some of it if there's anything on the glass itself. So you need something that is uh, solid enough to actually have the image cast onto it, but still see through. The ideal solution is actual ground glass, but I haven't made clear glass itself. Jim pointed us to the idea of wax paper, which is just semi-transparent enough. A few different papers here of varying thickness. I have cotton, works pretty good. It's a bit duller, but here I have some hem paper, which is very thin. That, I feel like, does a really good job. That might be good enough by itself. I think I'll try just the hem paper and uh, go from there. We'll see how that does. I think you probably need some dowels to hold this in. Yeah, that'd be a fun challenge. Next, I need to make the bellows, which ideally will be as black and light blocking as possible. To darken my cotton paper, I tested a few options of walnut husks, charcoal, and a dye made from acorns, iron oxide, and vinegar. The acorn dye seemed to work best, so I'll give that a shot first. First, I gotta soak them overnight in the acorn tendons, which unfortunately have started to mold. So I'm gonna skim that out. Something large we can put in there to displace. So the end result of the tannin dyeing is uh, pretty weak. And I think my problem is that I didn't have enough acorns. Uh, with the volume I was trying to dye, kind of ran out. In theory, I could uh, repeat this process a few more times and try and get it darker, but it was so very weak that uh, I'm gonna try a different method of uh, using the soot, some of the glue, and basically use it as a paint. But uh, I'm gonna try folding into the actual bellows first.
After the failure of my dyes, I got some advice from some users on my Discord channel to try and mix charcoal with my glue to make a basic paint. If you want to give me advice on future topics, be sure to join my Discord channel in the description below. I kind of wish that diet worked better. Then, probably the simplest part to make, the pinhole lens. <laughs> After waiting for all the paint to completely dry to the touch, I glued and clamped the bellows tight. As that seal to the edges will be crucial. Unfortunately, the next day, I found everything glued tightly together, and it was going to take some very careful surgical dissection to separate them again. Crisis averted. I touch it up. Galactic. So here I have my completed pinhole camera. It was a bit of a pain to put together. It's really limited building materials that I started with. Just wood, paper, and pig high glue. That's basically it. Having some nails and screws would have really made this a lot better. And even now it's not the strongest. In a little bit, I'm gonna take it out and take it on a test drive and try and use some store-bought film to see how good of a picture it takes. As a pinhole camera, it's pretty limited with just a pinhole. So one of the first things I wanna do next is make an actual lens for it, which will improve the amount of light it can take in, which will improve the exposure time and give it a lot more control. Anyone who's familiar with a pinhole camera knows the bellows was not really necessary for this. That is an attempt to future-proof it, because once I add my lens, it'll be necessary to change the size of my chamber in order to focus it. Right now, the paper does an okay job, but some actual ground glass would look a lot better and have a lot clearer image. Right now, I just have store-bought in here, and that, that'll do just for the test right now, but eventually, that is gonna be the real challenge, is making the film from scratch, so I can have this entire thing from scratch. So, over the next few weeks and months, I'm gonna be slowly improving and adding to this camera to get it up to a higher spec, and eventually add the film, and I can finally take my selfie. Getting the correct exposure for the pinhole was a bit of a challenge, but after several attempts, I was finally able to capture a few rough images of nearby buildings. Obviously a bit of a room for improvement, but these are definitely photos, and this will act as my baseline as a project progresses. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.